Okay, amongst the data I have access to, I have access to attendance data. Um, I have data on, I have data on marks of every single student in the faculty. Um, I have access to their extenuating circumstances data, um, to contacts with their personal tutors. So I'm able to look at the whole of a student's being within the university, rather than what I was able to do even five years ago, which was to look at one tiny aspect of it, which related to the course I was teaching on or into one of my other roles. So now I, I, what I now have is a much broader sense of who my students are, what's happening with them, and so I can really understand what is preventing them sometimes from achieving their full potential and can make more meaningful interventions to help them on the basis of that information. It helps you support your students to learn. We're here, we're not here to teach, we're here to help students learn. And by knowing much more about our students, by knowing, for example, how often um, they access resources, we can understand more about their learning patterns and start to set up the way we teach to suit a wider variety of students with different sorts of lives and activities going on. Colin has made the important distinction between using data for the purposes of management and learning analytics. For as long as we've had digital capabilities in our colleges and universities, we've been collecting digital data for management purposes in some way. Student registrations, information about courses that students are registered for, attendance, those sorts of things. Learning analytics, remember, is about the constant improvement of the student experience and the improvement um, of the learning and teaching environment. When we think more generally about learning analytics, we need to hold on to those points and stay focused on the use of data for advancing the improvement of all students' learning experiences at our colleges and universities. Institutions and individual lecturers are at different points on their journey towards the incorporation of learning analytics. So some universities and colleges are significantly ahead in applying learning analytics at an institutional level. Um, others are still experimenting with the opportunities. And even within institutions which are at a relatively sophisticated stage, the approach of individual teachers varies enormously from people who are at the lead of innovation in their institutions to those who perhaps are quite reluctant followers having concerns about some of these new applications. Here, we first of all uh, listen to teachers from a number of institutions who are at a fairly early stage in adopting learning analytics. And then we move on to uh, discuss with uh, lecturers, teachers, administrators at Greenwich University, which is at an advanced stage of adopting learning analytics. So let's hear what they have to say. It would allow me to identify those students who were just coasting. It would allow me to identify um, the students I could push a little further, maybe, to, to really stretch their uh, engagement with the course. Uh, I currently have a couple of students who are right up there, and whenever I ask them something that's a little bit more advanced than where they are, they're nailing it. So I want to be able to you know, give them something they can chew on, something really meaty. And if I had those sorts of analytics available to me, it would allow me to immediately identify that and move it forward. Even you know, if it could work, you could do it within a session rather than get it as a, an af, sort of an after session piece. If you could do that real time, marvellous, because then your, that whole formative piece as a teacher across the classroom allows you then to go, do you know what? He's nailing it, he's not. I spend time with him, give him something more to stretch him, and you're picking that up straight away. So on top of that whole human interface feedback thing that goes on in the classroom between students, you're also backing that up with real statistics, real figures in real time to be able to go, okay. And it doesn't have to be you know, something massively complicated either. Something simple that says, yeah, he's managed it, he's managed it, maybe not there. So using learning analytics with regards to like an early warning system, we have something um, which is the attendance monitoring system. 
This um, does have benefits um, for the students and, and obviously for the university because it does mean that um, with certain students if they don't attend a particular session um, then that triggers a response for their personal academic tutor to get in contact with them uh, and just make sure if there's any support needs they might need, if there's a particular reason why they're not able to get to classes etc. Unfortunately the, the negatives with regards to that is that um, with regards to some students, they can find it that it is a little bit patronising. Um, I recently had some feedback from some mature students that were saying that um, although they felt that yes it was a good system to, to ensure that people were attending the sessions, um, they did feel that if there were certain issues where um, through no fault of their own if, if, they, if they hadn't checked in for whatever reason it did generate this response and it was a bit like um, telling them off and not, not, not registering you know, when they went to school um, so, it, so it was a little bit like going back to school that's how they, that's how they put it I think learning analytics have kind of changed quite drastically it's not something we've tapped too much into but previously with Blackboard we kind of just had a really basic <coughs> access, so uh, so many learners have accessed it for so many hours, but we had no idea in regards to what their engagement with the actual content was. And I think uh, now we've kind of moved on to this Google platform, I'm going to be really intrigued to know, I've not really delved too much into the analytics yet, but I know it's going to be able to tell us how long they've spent on individual apps. So it's going to uh, allow us to judge what's really effective for them moving forward. Um, in regards to what apps we kind of embed into our practice more than anything. Not, not something that I, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm massively aware of it. Um, I don't actually have access to the analytics yet. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling to kind of get admin access to those analytics, but I, I am really intrigued to see them because that, that's our measurement of potentially how successful the use of Google has been in engaging the students. We've seen then that teachers want learning analytics. They want to use learning analytics, but what we've also learned is that the use of those learning analytics is moderated by the particular context of the college or university. So Zell, for example, made a very important point that older students can find attendance monitoring patronizing. It can actually alienate them rather than be a benefit to them. That's a very good example of a teacher taking into account the context of her particular class, her particular student's needs. So let's look at what it feels like for teachers who are in an institution that is in quite an advanced stage of thinking through these subtleties about how learning analytics should be used in the classroom appropriately and to best benefit. We put the videos on our virtual learning environment um, and that means we can track when students download it, how many students download it, and so on. I probably don't use the data as much as I should. I look at it occasionally. If I had more time, I would certainly look at it more. Um, I'm, I'm, because I'm not convinced it fully captures how many students are using it, I possibly don't look at it as much as I... I, 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 I don't necessarily expect it to be 100% accurate. But I do use it to see, you know, if I've put a video up for students to watch before the class, I can see how many of them appear to have watched it before the class, and that gives me some idea of how much I can assume about what they've done. Okay. So, the applications that, that uh, I promote the use of do generate data, but one of the, one of the core principles of the, um, the tools and technologies that we use outside of the institutional supported and sanctioned ones um, is that we have to maintain uh, an alertness to data protection, to um, professional, digital professionalism, and we have to really think about our own identities online and, and the students and the way that they're presenting themselves. So there is a, there's a clear separation of the way in the way that um, data is generated using, for example, cloud-based student response systems where I would encourage people to use um, pseudonyms or avatars or oh, first names only, nothing beyond that. Um, and the data that's generated there is very much pedagogy focused and very much of the moment. So you might have something where students are answering questions and um, it's about 
pushing forward formatively what you're, what you're learning in that lecture or that seminar, seeing where they're at, diagnosis, formative assessment practices. And I think it's very important that lecturers are aware that those considerations need to be made. And in particular, that the identity of the students in those, in those different forums. Um, you might go beyond that and set up, I don't know, a, a Google form or some kind of um, spreadsheet that uh, has the, the information fed into it. And you might request that the students use their full names so that you can see uh, um, how they're progressing against whatever your targets happen to be. And then you're starting to get into the zone of performance and things being in the cloud. So you have to be a little bit more careful and sensitive there. That's one side of things. The other side of things that's a big part of what we do and is, is more of, a, of an interesting issue in terms of the, the data, I suppose, and um, the way that it's used is when you're looking at things like the virtual learning environment and the, the capacity that that has to generate incredible amounts of data about, not, you know, for example, the way that I use it is not only seeing who's accessed what pages, but how long they've been in there. And if they say that they went in to submit an assignment and, it, and it's not there and it must be a fault of the system, whether they were in, you know, so checking up on the veracity of students' claims, you know, and it's all, it all seems a little bit dark and shady, but it can resolve a lot of problems according to the records you haven't or you have, or this happened or you went here, you went to the right place, the wrong place.